The centre is all about children making connections between what they learn in the classroom and real life. We're trying to help the children make um, connections between what they do and how it impacts the environment. The centre offers programs for grades 5, 6, 7, 8 and we have a program for science 1206. We have bogs, we have forests, we have ponds and streams and so there's so much there that they can see for real life. We have a, a wonderful boardwalk that goes right across a bog so the students can get right up and look inside a pitcher plant and they can stick a stick deep in the bog and see how deep it is and they can realize that it's actually made of water with plants in it. This is so hard to learn from a textbook. When you're right there in the bog, it means so much more. So we have a garden there too. We have a lovely vegetable garden or a kitchen garden where the students can work. They, um, they help with the planting, the weeding, the harvesting, and very importantly, they're seeing composting happening right there. We feed the children well. They, they really enjoy the food, but we're also trying to help them make connections between uh, the food that they're eating and the environment. So obviously students are learning a lot about the, how they should be eating healthy, but we try to help them to realize that it's not just about their health, it's also about the health of the environment. We know for sure that they're going to remember so much more of the things that they do than of the things that we tell them about. And so although we may give instructions, they're the ones doing most of the actions at the center. And this hands-on learning uh, is so much more powerful than just being told what to do. In orienteering, the children are learning about teamwork and they're learning about problem solving and they're learning how to read a map and they're learning about how important map reading is in real life. It means so much more to them when they're doing it for real rather than just sitting in the classroom learning about, about maps. So even the game of camouflage, which they all love so much, uh, is, is designed so that the children get really up close to mosses and lichens and pieces of wood and sometimes bugs, but they don't notice that they're doing that because they're having so much fun playing a game. But by being up close, face to face with um, a, a balsam fir tree or a crackerberry plant, you're really getting to know it so much better. And I think for some children, if you ask them to touch those things, even the beautiful soft mosses, they've never done that before. And if they're consciously doing it, it's not always easy for every child. But when they're doing it unconsciously through play, they're learning that it's a safe environment, that it's an environment that's worth preserving, that they, sh they, they should be taking care of all these beautiful things. For things like when they're building shelters in the forest, um, it's interesting to watch some children spend a lot of time outdoors and they can just go right at it and, have, and build these wonderful, wonderful shelters. Um, and others, they really struggle with it and yet they might be really good at book work, or, but they, um, they, they struggle with this. But it's a good kind of struggle because they always achieve it in the end. Many, many teachers say to us that they're delighted with so-and-so's behavior because it is so much better than it would normally be in the classroom. This is such a great way for children to learn. So we have two wind turbines that produce most of the electricity. So the wind turbines also become a focal point for teaching children about climate change and the reason for um, conserving electricity and for producing electricity using um, other sources than the Holyrood Power Station. There are certain traditions that we have at the centre that have been going on for a really long time and one of those is the hike to the fairy stump in the evening and they so much enjoy the stories uh, of Newfoundland fairies which is a little bit of their cultural heritage and it's just a perfect location for talking about fairies right there in the woods where the fairies are watching from behind the trees. Another tradition is the campfire. For many children have obviously experienced campfires in Newfoundland, but there are always those who've never had a chance to be at one, and that's just a fun time for, for the students to hang out with each other and to roast marshmallows and sing some songs and tell some jokes. We love for the children to do nature journaling on the last day, to, in the last few hours that they're at the centre, because by the time they've been there for um, a whole day and a night, they've they're very, um, they're ready for a little bit of quiet time. 
and sitting by the pond quietly in nature is an opportunity for them to reflect on all the things they've learned while they've been at the centre but also just to enjoy the peace of a wilderness location which most children never get to experience. It's so precious to sit down by that pond and listen to the water lapping against the stones and to hear the, the wind blowing through the fir trees. And listen, would you, rather... you know, I really encourage teachers to consider taking their students there because it's such a, it's such a great opportunity for the, the students to um, get to know each other, to learn more about what you're teaching them in the classroom and uh, to build memories that will last them a lifetime.